Hey everyone, Brian Eckberg here, and we're talking about Red Faction Guerrilla, a game that's soon to come. We've got Luke Schneider from Volition here. We're going to be talking about multiplayer. Now, we know that Red Faction Guerrilla, of course, has an extensive single-player campaign, but you guys have also blown it out with multiplayer. Tell me, when you guys were sat down and, and looked to design the multiplayer, what did you want to do with it? Uh, basically, the, the main thing we really wanted to do is make sure we emphasize the destruction system. That was our key thing. It wasn't so much about being an open-world game or a shooter. Like, all those things are important to us, but we had to be a, a high-quality multiplayer game with destruction. We, we really wanted to push that, and that sort of just drove all of our designs, drove sort of the backpack system as well, and just drove us to really make a, a really fun and, a, I think, a very engaging and unique experience. Now, I've spoken to Volition folks before, talking about how the destruction sort of guided the single-player gameplay, but what did you? were there any surprises you found and, and strategies, strategies that opened up that this destruction engine opened up for multiplayer as well. Well, the uh, thrust pack was actually not one of our original designs, and after we had the uh, jet pack and the, the rhino pack, which just basically lets you run through a building, we're like, well, what if you just go up and under someone? And that sort of just worked out, like, it's just a natural extension of our destruction system. And then uh, we, we also added the ability to actually go down through a building as well with the thrust pack. So a lot of our backpacks were just sort of driven by the destruction system itself and just sort of creating new ways of interacting with the world. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but backpacks don't appear in the single player game. It's a multiplayer only thing, right? Uh, aside from the jetpack, yes, that's correct. So why why bring uh, jetpacks or uh, backpacks into it at all? What was that design decision? Uh, it sort of evolved from the jetpack itself. We knew we wanted it for single player to sort of give the player a new way of like traversing the environment and sort of interacting with the destruction system in a new way. And so we just sort of <clears throat> we took that and we were thought we were thinking about doing classes for our game. And we're talking about the power-ups, and we decided, well, what if we just took the backpacks and put the classes and the power-ups on those instead? And that's sort of how it evolved, and it turned out to some, be something very unique. And it just, once we did a couple, we were like, oh, this is totally the way to go, and we should too, just do as many as we can, and that's exactly what we did. And I noticed that one of the things that's fun about multiplayer is that the backpacks are really well balanced. Can you tell us about balancing all the different powers that these backpacks allow you? Sure, I mean, it, it basically just comes down to playing the hell out of the game, more or less. Like, we have different ways of balancing the backpacks. There's recharge rates, there's how, how long each backpack will last. Um, there's also sort of a counter system, like heal and firepower counters for each other. Uh, thrust and jetpack are actually sort of counters for each other, because they can be used tactically against each other. So we have other ways of balancing the backpacks. and. It just sort of evolved over time to make sure that no backpack is dominating the game. If somebody, if players were using the heal backpack too much, it would just slow down the recharge rate a little bit until it sort of felt right and you couldn't dominate with one backpack or another. And there's always a counter to even the backpacks themselves. If someone has a jetpack, you grab the enforcer and just take them out from long range because they're flying through the air. They're an easy target for the enforcer. Now, let's talk about modes in multiplayer. We'll talk about Wrecking Crew separately, but tell me about the different modes that you can play and how many people can play in them. Okay, we have uh, 16 players for all of our modes. We have Anarchy and Team Anarchy, which is our, our Team Deathmatch and our Deathmatch modes. We also have Capture the Flag, which really changes with destruction because it's a territorial sort of mode, but because you can build up and re you can destroy and repair the bases and make new paths, it sort of adds a whole new flavor to CTF. Uh, we also have Damage Control, which takes the destruction even further, where instead of controlling a point by standing on it, you actually destroy and repair these control points. There's three in each level. And if you control all three, you actually get double the points while you do that. So it's really key. It's really important to try to control all three points and stop the other team, stop the other team from doing that, because that's really what will decide a match, more or less. Then we have uh, Demolition, which each team has a destroyer, and this destroyer, his job is to destroy everything. He gets points for everything he destroys, just based on the mass of the object he destroys. And you're either trying to protect your destroyer or kill the other team's destroyer at the same time. And then finally, we have Siege Mode, which is our attack and defend mode. We have special maps built just for Siege, and it's one team attacking, one team defending, and you switch roles and do it again. And the team that finishes with either the best time or the most amount of destruction will win the, win the match. So uh, Red Faction Guerrilla, when's it coming out and what platforms? It's uh, June 2nd in the U.S. for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and June 5th for Europe for the same platforms. All right, Luke, thank you so much. Red Faction Guerrilla coming very soon.